there are very fundamental relations between convex sets and convex functions so let us relate the two to this end define the set ap of f so this is called the epigraph the epigraph of f is defined as the set of all x t belonging to r n plus 1 so suppose that f is a function from r n to r then the ap of f is defined as x t belonging to r n plus 1 such that f of x is less than equal to t for all x in the domain of f so this is the definition of the epigraph of f you might recall the norm cone so if with this definition you can see that if f x is norm of x then ap of f epigraph of the norm is the norm cone so epigraph of f is the norm cone for the function norm of f so similarly we are defining the epigraph of any arbitrary function so it is easy to imagine how an epigraph looks like basically suppose you have a 2d function and you draw its curve so this is f of x this is x so this is a scalar function then by fixing various values of t you can see that the epigraph would look something like this so in the epigraph all the x values for which the function is less than a given t are incorporated therefore if the y axis is replaced by the t axis then you can see that this entire region becomes the epigraph so this entire region is the epigraph so this is the t axis this is the x axis so in other words epigraph means the part of the function that is above the function so ap means above now the link between convex sets and convex functions can be seen from here the link is that f is a convex function if and only if if and only if ap of f is a convex set so the epigraph of f is a convex set that condition is equivalent to saying that f is a convex function so this is another way of actually verifying whether a function is convex or not you can calculate its epigraph and verify that it is a convex set and vice versa if you know that something is a epigraph of another convex function then that epigraph is definitely a convex set in fact several of the conditions that we have seen so far are also applicable for instance consider the first order condition so the first order condition for functions was that the tangent was below the function the first order condition translates to saying that there is a line which is tangent to the epigraph and it is entirely outside the epigraph so what is this function so the first order condition here translates to the supporting hyperplane theorem so the supporting hyperplane the red line here is the supporting hyperplane and that is corresponds to the first order condition for the functions so i hope the link between the convex sets and functions is clear through this diagram and this idea of epigraph it is also possible to generalize convex functions this end define define the set s of alpha as the set of all x such that f of x 
is less than equal to alpha. Note that this definition is for a given alpha, right? So different from the epigraph where t was part of the definition of the set. Here alpha is not part of the definition of the set. In fact, I give you alpha and then you find out s alpha for that alpha. Also note that if f is from r n to n to r, then s alpha is a subset of rn only as opposed to epigraph which is a subset of rn plus 1. So for a simple example, let's say you have this function and I specify this alpha, then the interval that is between this region where f of x is less than equal to that alpha value. So this interval, this is the alpha, this interval is exactly the s of alpha. Right? So because f is a scalar function, s of alpha is also a subset of the real line instead of the 2D plane. So there is an interesting result which is that f of x convex implies that s of alpha is a convex set. f of x convex implies that s of alpha is a convex set. So why is that the case? As long as it is non-empty because you could always specify alpha to be very small making s alpha empty. So let's assume that s alpha is non-empty. So we require that alpha is larger than the smallest value f of x takes in which in that case f of s of alpha would be non-empty. So the result is that f of x convex implies that s of alpha is a convex set. So why is that? Let's say that let's prove the convexity of s of alpha. So let's say there are two points x1 x2 in s of alpha. Then what can we say about theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2. Note that x1 x2 are in s of alpha which means that f of x1 is less than equal to alpha and f of x2 is also less than equal to alpha. Then let's calculate f of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2. So f of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 is less than equal to from the convexity of f. Remember that f is convex. This is less than equal to theta times f of x1 plus 1 minus theta times f of x2 and this is less than equal to theta times alpha plus 1 minus theta times alpha from here. So we obtain that this is equal to alpha. So therefore f of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 is less than equal to alpha which implies that theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 belongs to s of alpha and hence s of alpha is convex. So we have seen that f of x being convex automatically implies that s of alpha is a convex set. However, the converse is not true. So converse is not true. In other words, it is possible to have a set s of alpha defined like this which is a convex set but still it is possible to have the corresponding f of x to be non-convex right so it is possible that s of alpha is a convex set but f is non-convex so it is possible that f of x is non-convex in fact any monotonic function so you can see here that any monotonic function in x would have a s of alpha which is convex right so let's take an example so let's take a counter example for this case so f of x let's say log of x so what kind of function is log of x you can easily verify that hessian of log of x would be minus 1 by x square which is less than 0. So log of x 
is not a convex function it is in fact a concave function right but what is s of alpha s of alpha is equal to set of all x such that log of x is less than equal to alpha or note that this is only defined for x greater than 0 so this is equivalent to set of all x such that x is between 0 and e raised to the power alpha so this is nothing but the interval 0 e raised to the power alpha which is indeed a convex set it is just an interval so you have seen here that f of x is not convex but still uh, the set s of alpha is convex right so the functions f such that s of alpha is a convex set are called quasi convex right so this is a generalization of convexity quasi convex functions so a function is quasi convex if the sublevel set so this is called the sublevel set so if the sublevel set is convex set then the function f is said to be quasi convex likewise f such that the super level set so super level set is the set of all x such that f of x is greater than equal to alpha right as opposed to less than equal to alpha we have greater than equal to alpha so the super level set is convex if the super level set is convex then it is called quasi concave so then it is called a quasi concave function so this is essentially the generalization of convex and concave functions so we have quasi convex and quasi concave functions they are clearly more general than convex functions because for example uh, we have seen monotonic functions are actually quasi convex monotonic functions are actually also quasi concave so they are both quasi convex and quasi concave so a function for instance a function like this would be quasi convex and quasi concave because you take any point then the super level set is this one sorry the sub level set is this one and the super level set is this one and both are convex sets both these intervals are convex so that's all for generalization of convex functions and their links to convex sets